So Yama is a senior sales engineer at uh, Trend Micro. He has the custom success team for Trend Micro uh, Cloud One Workload Security. As a cloud and a product expert, Yama will talk about today the importance of cloud security posture management. Perfect. So, hi everybody. My name is Yama. As Brian mentioned, I'm a sales, senior sales engineer for Trend Micro, and I'll be talking to you about cloud governance and security posture management. So, just for today's topics, we're going to kind of take a look at what cloud, how cloud governance is defined, the risk management challenges facing cloud governance, the top five configuration failures, the cost of breaches caused by misconfigurations, and finally, how a CSPM or a cloud security posture management tool can help cloud governance operators. So first of all, I'm not going to read this whole definition, but I just wanted to highlight the areas that are bolded. And that is cloud governance is the people, process, and technology associated with your cloud infrastructure, security, and operations. Just remember, there are a multitude of frameworks out there, and it's highly recommended to follow one or more of them as they'll help with cost optimization, resiliency, security, and compliance. As you can see here, over time, AWS has grown from 25 services in 2013 to over 165 in 2019. This is an increase of over six times in the span of five years. The other cloud providers have also um, have had major growth in services. We're just highlighting AWS as it is still the largest cloud service provider. These services can help an organization introduce and become leaner, more agile, and automated, but it comes at a price. The price isn't just the monetary cost. There are also other costs to take into account, such as the cost of learning and managing these services. As we saw in the previous slide, the number of services is growing exponentially. And what does that this leave us with? A knowledge gap. It is next to impossible to keep up with every service and understand how to configure them, not only to your needs, but to meet the best practices for that services. This knowledge gap causes major risk by allowing for higher percentage of misconfigurations. Another, another major concern is that majority of organizations bring security in later which increases the risk exponentially as well as making it more expensive. Security is viewed as something hard. And why is that? There's two main reasons, the lack of visibility and not enough automation. So what do we mean by a lack of visibility? This is the inability to see the assets running in your environment as well as any new assets that are introduced. This is not just an on-premise issue, but also a cloud one. It's actually more difficult in the cloud because most of the time you have multiple teams in the cloud for different functions. The infrastructure team is looking at how the environment is laid out and would like to optimize it, where the security team needs to lock down the environment and the DevOps teams just need to spin up and use resources with minimal resistance. A lack of automation also creates a major hurdle to overcome. When having to do tedious tasks manually, at some point, the team gets tired and make, can make a mistake. We take the automation we currently have for granted and need to learn how to get better at it. Imagine having to install an agent and configuring each one of those agents on over a thousand uh, nodes. Now, I don't know about you, but for myself, at about probably the 50th agent, I'd be running on autopilot and will definitely make a mistake. When being in the cloud, automation is your best friend. And the more you can automate, the more security will become a part of your journey versus an afterthought. 
moving fast or staying secure. This is an old school mindset. If given the choice, most organizations will select moving faster to keep themselves competitive. But that does not have to be the choice you make. This is the ideal situation to be in, to move fast and stay secure. With automation, you're able to keep security as part of the project, such as when it comes to migrating to the cloud. Security doesn't need to be an afterthought. You can do the migration and automate security to stay safe as well as meet your deliverables. As we've seen throughout this presentation, the IT landscape is becoming more complex by the day, and with that comes new vectors of attack. The top new vectors of attack are the DevOps pipelines. With an increase in the adoption of DevOps processes, attackers are looking to take advantage of weak links in the CICD pipeline. Serverless platforms like AWS Lambda are becoming very uh, popular and with the growth of popularity, there is an increase in attacks focusing on vulnerable codes. Containers are the DevSecOps team's number one priority to protect both the image and registry level. Lastly, misconfigurations. These can exponentially increase the risk of attack. Some of the common ones are storage access. These are misconfiguration uh, storages like AWS S3 or Azure Blob. Secret management, making sure to keep your secrets such as API keys, encryption keys, and your credentials are all hidden and following proper processes. Logging and monitoring is extremely important since this is how you track actions of both internal and if a breach occurs, external behaviors. Permissive access to workloads. You should always be following the principle of least privileges to mitigate this risk. And finally, lack of validation. This is where someone internal, external, or a cloud security part of posture management, a CSPM tool to keep everything and everyone honest as well as validate the services and permissions are properly configured. With the migration to cloud, most organizations find themselves migrating with multiple teams working in silo fashions with minimal oversight. The issue with more services, the learning curve becomes steeper, making complexity in the cloud that much harder. This increases the risk of misconfigurations, which will increase the likelihood of an attack. Organizations are slowly finding this issue unmanageable and trying to create teams to mitigate the risk of a breach, as well as meet compliance and having proper governance by following a proper process or framework. So to, to summarize, uh, the issue, rapid growth in the cloud services causing a steep learning curve, siloed approach by teams adding to the issue of visibility, finally proving compliance. Now let's take a quick look at two real life breaches and their impacts. We can see here, Time Warner had a breach exposing about 4 million of their customers' personal information all because of only two public AWS S3 buckets. I'd like, you for, I'd like for you to take a moment and just think of the impact and damage this has done to them and only caused by two S3 buckets that are public facing. How many do you have or plan on having in your environment? Next breach we're looking at is our friends at Uber, which I'm sure majority uh, of us have used. I personally use their taxi service all the, uh, all the time prior to the pandemic, and now find myself using Uber Eats at times, although the fees can really hit my wallet. As you can see, they had a breach of 
57 million individuals uh, records affected, causing them to pay out just under $150 million. This is more than what a lot of organizations make in a year. And to think, this is all from something as simple as multi-factor authentication. Do all of your accounts have this set up? I know we do a trend, although it can be a pain at times, but the trade-off is definitely worth it. So taking a look at cloud security posture management and the benefits around them. So Gartner expresses the following two points. As many of us know that endpoints and data centers, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, should have their own protection strategy and require different layers of protection. For example, user-centric protection versus network-centric. The cloud just makes this more difficult and organizations should start using offerings specifically designed for the cloud, like a cloud security posture management tool. This will allow your organization to get insight on your cloud environment and help with governance, reliability, security, and cost optimization. As mentioned earlier, the growth of cloud services are increasing complexity to an already com uh, complex problem. With this growth, new threat vectors are introduced, opening your organization to more uh, vulnerabilities. And this will only get worse as more and more services are introduced and used. With multiple teams in the environment, visibility becomes a serious issue by increasing risk and deteriorating the ability to meet compliance. To add to this bad situation, this also causes problems with following best practices and proper frameworks. This is forcing organizations to spend more money than they need to by investing into too many tools and trying uh, to try to mitigate this risk. So how can a CSPM give you real life solutions to real life challenges? So the first one, lack of visibility. It gives you the ability to do real time monitoring, whether you're in a cloud or you're in multiple clouds from a single pane of glass. So now when you have individuals spinning up new workloads, serverless functions, containers, and so on, your CSPM tool can give visibility into this and allow you to govern the environment more effectively, which leads right into our next point, the constantly changing industry standards and compliance requirements. A CSPM tool can do continuous scans against standards such as NIST, GDPR, HIPAA, PAPIDA, and many more. Although your organization might not have to adhere to all of these compliance requirements, we are in a global market and different regions expect different standards. So building infrastructure to meeting best practices. The CSPM tool should be able to give you an automatic guardrail for reliable and scalable instructions. Lastly, the one we all hate, alert overload, or what I like to call alert fatigue. A CSPM tool is able to give you configurable alerting that can integrate with different systems like your ticketing system JIRA or your SIM tools. So looking back at cloud operational excellence, these are some of the areas that a cloud security posture management tool can, can help with. So, they can give you central visibility and real-time monitoring of infrastructure. It can give you automatic guardrails for secure, reliable, and scalable cloud. They can give you high-risk violations are instantly detected and auto-corrected. They have built-in DevOps with automation and powerful APIs. This includes infrastructure as a code template scanning, such as a cloud formation template. These templates can take a manageable misconfiguration and make them exponentially larger issue with higher risk and exposure. 
as you keep running these templates, you keep increasing your misconfigurations and that increases your vector of attack. So to, to kind of take a quick conclusion here on um, the presentation, tips to get started when it comes to your CSPM. So your first iteration should be focusing on the high severity cloud accounts slash subscriptions, i.e. those that uh, hold customers' data or manage the infrastructure, such as the CICD uh, pipeline. Next, there should be a narrow the initial set of rules to those you consider high severity and start with security rules. Why do we start with security rules? Because everything else is irrelevant if you get a breach. And lastly, we need to enable developers to move fast and remove security as a gatekeeper by integrating your CSPM tool with, uh, and having them send alerts with other ticketing systems, as I mentioned, like JIRA. So just as uh, we're gonna move into the Q&A section, there are a couple things that I'd like for you to think about. First of all, what are some of the lessons you've learned? And it's, and it's not to take a look at it just as a CSPM, but overall cloud governance and the importance of cloud governance, as well as the complexity of migrating into the cloud. Have a, how have your perceptions of a cloud security posture management tool changed? Are you currently using anything? If not, has your mindset um, gone to, maybe we should take a look? Because with the cloud, as I mentioned, complexity will only increase. And lastly, what are your next steps? As an organization, what will you be doing next to automate, increase visibility, as well as security? <laughs>